The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Oh, hell no! Whatever! The following program contains opinions expressed by The Dead Zone. If you find this broadcast offensive, lighten up, candy ass. What? Oh my gosh. It's a radio show. Hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Power up request received. Initiating systems. Powering up transmitters. Welcome to the dead zone. Wait a minute. Heal face. WDZI Digital Broadcast. Hey, it's July 28th, Dead Zone Paranormal Radio Show. we got a great show tonight. Old friend of the show just got on a brand new series, Mr. K.D. Stafford, the mad scientist, the paranormal mad scientist, and believe me, he has some things, he builds some things that are just a little bit scary. We're going to be talking to him later on tonight about some of those uh, inventions of his. Plus, how everything's going on the brand new show, The Ghost of Morgan City. That's on the Travel Channel, but we'll be covering that later on. Paranormal News. Hey, this is Michelle again. So this week's Paranormal News and Events, I found a story on MysteriousUniverse.org. Ghost and High Strangeness at Arizona's Haunted Domes. This article was written by Brent Swanser, dated July 24th, 2019. Driving down I-8 just outside of Casa Grande, Arizona, as the desolate moonscape of this desert land rushes by you, might come across a small rural road called Thornton Road. If you take this road, you will pass through some rough desert scrub before having a very strange sight loom up ahead. There, just past a decrepit fence with the faded words, No Trespassing, etched upon it, you will see, squatting out in the desert, what looks like enormous alien spacecraft, otherworldly domed UFOs, looking very out of place and quite eerie. You take these to be some sort of mirage, your eyes playing tricks on you, or you think that you have stumbled upon some secret government installation, but you would be wrong. But the truth is just as weird. These are the mysterious domes of Casa Grande, which have long been the origin of all manner of tales of high strangeness, and where ghosts, evil cults, and weird portals to other dimensions are the order of the day. Although they resemble something from another world, the history of the Casa Grande domes is far from alien in nature, and they are very much of this earth. In the 1980s, a California-based computer circuitry manufacturer called Intercon Technology decided to relocate their main headquarters to a 135-acre stretch of rural, dusty, sun-parched land just outside of Casa Grande. The company went about building a complex of unique dome-like structures due to their low cost, structural integrity, and insulation qualities using a very interesting design and method of construction. To build the domes, a foundation was built to which was attached a sort of giant balloon that was inflated over a steel skeleton. After that, workers went inside and sprayed the interior with a durable polyurethane foam to the shape of the balloon, and added reinforcement was then put into place in the form of rebar and concrete, and the balloon was deflated, with the end result being some iconic and rather weird-looking structures that are hard to miss. Intercon 
would suddenly lose it all when they defaulted on a bank loan and the whole site was seized in 1983 by the Union Bank of California before it was even finished. The bizarre complex of domes and an eccentric building looking very much like a flying saucer were left abandoned to the desert, slowly rusting and crumbling away under the relentless attack of the elements. There they gathered dust and also various strange stories over the years until the domes of Casa Grande became a place of all manner of local legends and it is not hard to see why. With the unearthly looking buildings, its subterranean network of tunnels and its desolate locale, it all seems like just the sort of place to which odd tales would gravitate and they do. One of the first rumors that began spreading after the company had left and the site became basically an illegal dumping ground for garbage was that cults of robed figures were coming out here to perform arcane rituals at night. It was said that the shape of the domes and their specific location were ideal for channeling energy to power the rituals, and there were even whispers that these cults were summoning demons into our world by using the domes as portals. Besides this, there have been many reports of ghosts lurking about here, possibly the victims of the various human sacrifices or the spirits of murder victims rumored to be buried here. It doesn't help that it is said that the area was once a burial ground for the ancient Anasazi tribe of the region, further adding to its spookiness and macabre allure. People visiting the domes have reported all manner of paranormal phenomena, including shadow figures, disembodied voices, and even physical attacks by unseen hands, as well as a deep sense of overwhelming foreboding and panic that sets in immediately upon stepping foot here. Electronic equipment tends to malfunction here as well, as do compasses. Some stories have said that the dark forces allegedly lurking here will slowly drive people insane, and there have even been people who have claimed to have been followed home by strange demonic apparitions. Cars parked on the road nearby are said to be besieged by tapping, knocks, or even violently rocked, and the site has in general gone on to gain a reputation for being intensely haunted and steeped in weirdness. Paranormal investigators who have visited the domes have claimed to have captured all sorts of evidence of ghostly activity, such as videos, photos, and intense EVP phenomena, wherein the voices of ghosts are caught on audio tape. It was this reputation as a deeply haunted place that brought the Casa Grande Dome's fame when the crew from the popular paranormal TV show Ghost Adventures came to investigate. During the episode, the crew claims to experience all manner of supernatural creepiness. There are unexplained noises, fleeting shadows captured on camera, and they are constantly plagued by an overwhelming sense of despair and negativity to the point that host Zach Beggins is seen to be visibly shaken and out of breath on several occasions for no reason he can fathom. Another crew member claims to experience a jolting pain in his abdomen when he tries to read out a prayer. They also capture an EVP of a voice growling demon, and the whole thing is so unsettling that Baggins ultimately proclaims this may be one of the most unusual yet sinister places we've ever investigated in America. Whether there is anything to any of this, all is up for debate. But whatever is going on here might be gone soon. The domes are rotting, collapsing in on themselves, and considering the threat their perilous footing and unstable st structures pose to the numerous curiosity seekers, paranormal investigators, vandals, and teens looking for a place to party, as of 2017, the county has ordered the whole site to be demolished, although no set timeline for this was announced. Although the site has been up for sale for years and in sometimes rented out for shoot for film shoots or photographers, it has mostly become nothing more than a hazardous sprawl of strange ruins and illegally dumped garbage, so it has been decided to clear it all away and let the desert have the land back. One wonders what will happen when this truly odd site is gone and if any of the strange phenomenon associated with it will disappear as well. So there you have it. 
That sounds like a really cool place to go investigate. I wish we were closer so that we could do that. If you have any plans to investigate the haunted domes in Arizona, I would say you best do it quick. And now on to upcoming events. The Spook Show Con, August 17th in DeKalb, Illinois. Looks like it's going to be a really good time. There's going to be a lot of crafts, readings, speakers, and a ghost investigation at the Egyptian Theater. For more information, go to their website, spookshowcon.com. The Horror Hound Weekend in Indianapolis, September 6th through September 8th. There's going to be a lot of celebrities there, Q&A sessions, a lot of vendors. There's going to be sections like the Mask Fest, which will have our very own Scott Blake there representing his company of Your Dream Creations. Stop in and check him out. There's going to be the Factor Fiction Fest, which is where we will be set up. A rural Indiana Paranormal, Dead Zone. Please stop by and say hey. Uh, for more information, you can go to horrorhoundweekend.com. The Scarefest in Lexington, Kentucky, September 12th through the 15th. There are a lot of celebrities that go to the Scarefest. They have speakers, vendors. Uh, we will actually be one of the speakers there. We'll be doing our Bare Bones 101 for Beginners Ghost Investigations. Please stop and say hey to us. So you can check out more information on that one at thescarefest.com. Keep it smoking, boy. Smoking. Don't smoke. It causes cancer. You know what I mean. Would you just get up a spaceship or something? Colombian gold, man. Grass, hash, the weed. Dig it? God damn son of a... We have had some technical problems. Hit it! Dead Zone WDZRDB Worldwide. Your source for everything paranormal. Para X. He's born ready. You know. He's born ready, and guess what? It's Katie Stafford from. What's the name of the show, dude? What is it? What is it? Ghost Let's go. City. Oh, I was waiting on Ghost this guy. City. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're just having fun with you, man. And good yeah. to have you on the show. Uh, we've got Dustin Coffee in the studio with us now. That's right. I'm here. And. Scott Blake and a new friend of the show. What's your name again? Stacy. Stacy. Stacy no, gonna no be sitting there with you. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember anything anymore. I never have been able to. So what's uh, happening, man? Uh, not a whole lot, you know. Just uh, doing my usual thing down here in the lab, putting stuff together. Putting stuff together. I just told these guys about a, a thing that you had built a while back, like a Tesla coil thing. It's like the most dangerous thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and, you, and, and you guys use that, right? Yeah, you're probably referring to the Jacob's Ladder. The, uh, Jacob's Ladder, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tesla poles are, are also pretty dangerous, but yeah. Jacob's Ladder are, yeah. They're, oh, that's they're crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. I think we met you, how long ago was it, Dustin? Uh, a little over a year. I'm oh, sorry? Was it the infirmary? The infirmary, yeah, yeah. yeah. Randolph County in Winchester. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you had uh, you were you were I think we, you had the hell much there. Yeah, the crazy yeah helmet that does yeah, stuff. I can't remember what it does. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I had the, the ghost helmet. That's um, that was kind of right after uh, I, I got comfortable with the setup, and I thought it was uh, it was doing what I wanted to do or what I thought it would do, and so I decided to you know start touring it around with this and stuff. So. Yeah, that was a big thing then, and I think um, I think we had uh, paranormal task force. I had their helmet there too, so I just made yeah. it on my stuff. Yep, you sure did. Yeah. So what does it help? What, you, know, you told me that you you explained it to us time and time. We've never had him on the show before, have we? Him or Katie, right? Oh, by the way, yeah. hi to Katie and the yes. family. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll tell her hello. She's picking our, our uh, son up right now from his nana's house. All right. Well. 
our, our, our be, doing the domestic goddess things. Right yeah, on. Our best right, family. Yeah, yeah. Okay, before we get into what you, it's so cool that you've got this new show. Let's talk about what does that helmet do? Uh, okay, so the helmet, right? Uh, first of all, I was inspired to play with the idea. Uh, I saw when I was a kid uh, a study that was being done, a scientific experiment that was being done with uh, something called the God Helmet. The God Helmet, and, that's uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I remember it, yeah. Right. Yeah, and that was uh, Dr. Michael Persinger and uh, uh, Stanley Corin uh, was the engineer who built the helmet. And Michael Persinger was the uh, was the neuroscientist that had the idea that uh, by targeting a specific part of your brain uh, and using a specific complex series of uh, uh, magnetic fields applied to that part of your brain. Uh, that he thought that he could induce a um, a fake paranormal experience or a fake religious experience. Right. And so they did all these experiments, this in the lab, you know, um, under all these controlled conditions inside of a Faraday cage, and um, they had a lot of different, a lot of interesting results from it. <clears throat> and most of the time, at a minimum, people would feel like there was a presence with them in the room. Uh -huh. So, I thought it was interesting, um, you know, this, that he was trying to disprove paranormal activity or paranormal experiences uh, with the helmet and electromagnetic waves. Right. Um, it made me wonder, like, okay, what if what if what you're seeing is not fake? What if this is rewiring your brain to see something that's usually there, but you can't? Uh, interact with it, or you can't sense it under normal conditions that are, you know, the normal way our brains work. So, well, that, that'd be that'd be kind of like uh, if you walk into a highly magnetic, energized. I guess I'm looking. I'm not, not going to say the right word here. Um, a strong magnetic. A, field. a strong magnet. Uh, yeah. A. Um, a oh, I. I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to sound like an idiot. Just say it. I'm going to do it anyway. Unshielded. Ungrounded wires throughout an old house uh -huh. give off, you know, that kind of uh, that kind of vibe, right? Am I not similar? Right? Yeah, similar. Uh, that's, that's a similar thing, you know, and, and that's kind of the way science has kind of explained away paranormal experiences. Is, right. Is by, and it's always that's always the go-to response. Like they can't figure out what you if they can't determine, like you know, exactly what it was that you thought you saw or you thought you experienced, then they will automatically go to the, oh, well, it's probably just, you know, a hallucination induced by uh, electromagnetic fields. And, right. you know, I, I find that interesting because, you know, I don't remember the last time I had a hallucination from <laughs> just a standard magnetic field. Right. Well, n n yeah, not that anyway. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, I, I've been in some pretty serious, uh, intense magnetic fields. I mean, when you're in your car, you're. I mean, that's that's a pretty serious magnetic field that, that so many pieces of electronics and your alternator and everything's putting off in your car. Right. So, I mean, to me, that wasn't a valid explanation. Okay. Uh, so, you know, and then I saw this. Uh, I saw this documentary, and I can't even remember what the documentary was, but it was a scientist, and he he was working in his lab one night, and. Um, he said that he felt like something was there with him, and he was there on the floor alone. And he turned to his left, and he saw an apparition coming towards him, and it just kind of uh, dissipated and went through him and kept on going. And he thought it was weird, but he signed this, and he was like, I just saw a ghost, but it can't be a ghost. And then he said that uh, one of his uh, studies, understudies that was working in the lab a few nights later had the same experience. And so then he started looking around, trying to figure out if there was something environmental that could cause this. So then he realized that someone or that the, uh, uh, another department had installed this electron something upstairs, some kind of big uh, electronic device that had put off this heavy field, right? And it had a big fan on it that, that caused this, this heavy electromagnetic field. And he said, you know, oh, I figured it out. There you go. That's what it's causing. <laughs> But 
to, that's just crazy to me because how in the world can just some random electromagnetic field off of a piece of uh, a device like a fan or something, yeah. um, electrical device? Right. How what, what, my, my, two people, two people have the same um, experience, you know, mm-hmm. two nights in a row. Basically. Right. And you know. I just don't buy it. So yeah. I decided to make the helmet find out myself. And, of course, I didn't have a god helmet to go off of, so I just kind of engineered it from the ground up, you know, how I, how I, how I thought it. Um, right, to, yeah. To be <laughs> I, I couldn't engineer anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. I just, it, it amazes me, though, like uh, a bad, uh, a bad uh, breaker box can cause problems with some people evidently i don't know I, That's yeah right. yeah no you're right you're right now there's no doubt that that uh that certain and some people are are more um more open to the effects of uh, electromagnetic fields i'm not saying that electromagnetic fields strong fields can't interact with you and cause you to have uh different effects on you yeah but it's usually it's, it's usually like a feeling of something right a, it's, it's a, like a feeling of feeling. a feeling of dread yeah. or or something that you're not alone that kind of thing or just anxiety well, most of the time it's like a, well, most of the time it's like a panic it's like yeah a, anxiety like exactly the fear cage right, right. like everybody at the point to the fear cage and say well this is probably what's inducing you know feelings of fear or dread or whatever like panic attack or something and that that's you know that's that's possible and i think there's been there's been studies done on it and it is it does cause people to experience stress in some situations, some right. people. Right. But that, there's a stark difference there between a general feeling of dread and panic and seeing an apparition. Right. You know, I mean, it's one thing to be, to have the way our, our mental, you know, process is affected and make us think differently, but, but, to, but to inject a visual or auditory hallucination. I mean, that's kind of pinpoint stuff, right? Our brain does that. Yeah. Well. Do you, yeah. Do yeah. you think that, like, um, maybe it could be the uh, power of suggestion? Maybe um, somebody explains to them, to to you, the experience they had while um, being exposed to EMF, and then when you get exposed to the same the same kind of setup, um, you have the same kind of reaction to it. Right, I see what you're saying. Um, oh, like you're um, pre, like, uh, positioning yourself to believe something already. Sure. Yeah, uh, well, of course, then, that, that's something that always has to be taken into account. You know, like, uh, even with, with just your, like, going ghost hunting or whatever it is, location is, like, a popular location. Like, everything you see and hear about this location is, whether you like it or not, or, or whether you try to block it out or not, you've been influenced by all this information already. So subliminal. You yeah. Try to, yeah. Right. Yeah. And sure. that's that's the case most of the time, but not always. But you know, anything that you're exposed to beforehand obviously can cause um, um, you to kind of be suggested to lean in that direction. But you know, like with uh, with my helmet and and some of the experiments that I've done, I've noticed. I mean, it's not, it's not that you, you get a lot of just things that you wouldn't expect, you know, like I would expect, now I have gotten a lot of times people feel a presence in the room, but I would expect them, um, you know, maybe to see something similar every time. And it, it wouldn't it matter what location you were at, right? But it seems to me that uh, I've had a lot of experiments done by uh, some of my uh, friends in the field that I've uh, made helmets for. And they've done several, I mean, probably over a dozen investigations at Ashmore State since yeah. they got their helmets. And, um, you know, several people have worn the helmet at those locations. Now, you, you, you do more than helmets, too. I mean, you do, like, ghost boxes. I know a, a very good friend of ours, oh, a yeah. good, good friend yeah. of the show, Cheryl, you know, Cheryl Carter, right? Mm-hmm. Cheryl and Carter. I mean, I, she just displayed a box that you had made for her at uh, Mid-South this year, right? Right, yeah, yep, yeah, I, I did, I made that, I actually made that box for her, mm-hmm. and gave it to her, she bought that box from me at the 
the uh, not the last uh, Mid South, but the one before that. Right. Well, we and, we just uh, we just saw her. Um, she was right next to us this uh, this year. I wish I wish you could have been there, awesome. buddy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, it, it was it was really cool. Oh yeah, you've been you've been busy a little. Yeah, it's okay. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I just wanted you know. Yeah, you do uh, a lot more than than uh, these oh, helmets yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The helmets is kind of like um, everybody likes it. You know, everybody either likes it or they hate it. They want to they want to they want to talk about it. You know, it's cool with me either way. I mean. It's, I, I, another thing, another thing that's cool that you didn't mention is uh, these helmets, or at least the one that I saw, that we saw, right? Uh, yeah. Um, they have LED lights that. Uh, right. That, yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's something that's a little bit sets it apart from the, the the older God helmet. Also, I mean, besides the fact that it doesn't work the same at all. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's just magnets. All right. Yeah. Head, well, there you go. It's completely Upgrade. different as far as the mechanism goes, and yeah, the LEDs. LEDs is a whole other uh, addition to it. It's called brain entrainment. And, uh, I mean, there's science behind all this stuff, right? Yeah. And, um, so brain entrainment basically says that you can, um, it's possible to sync your brain waves with uh, whatever frequency that uh, flash into your eyes for a certain period of time. Cool. Now, did not, did that, did Chris... Mm-hmm. Chris Booth not used that a couple of years ago, or, or I, I, I don't know. I can't remember. Dude. I, I, know. I, I know we were there. We were there know, with he's you. Had, he's had his helmet on so many different people. He doesn't remember. <laughs> he doesn't know. Okay. But but I mean, it, Chris, Chris, who now? Chris Booth. Chris oh Booth. no, yeah, no, yeah. He didn't use it. No, no, no. Oh, no we, yes, had, no. Um, we had, we uh, had. Uh, her name is. Uh, hold on. Who did we have wear that? I can't remember. I can't remember who wore it. Right. Welcome, well, yeah, to, yeah. welcome to no, me. Welcome to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, All right. Yeah, I'm gonna find out. But anyway, yeah, we had her. We had her wear the helmet in uh, the basement at the infirmary. Yes. And right yeah, there, yeah. Yeah. That was that was an awesome experience. I mean, she. We had her wear it in a specific room, right? Because we knew that. Oh, it was Jessica. Jessica Potter. Yeah. Jessica. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I couldn't remember who wore it for a minute because yeah, there were a few people, but um, so. We we chose this one room specifically because that that was the room where the lady had supposedly hung herself, right? Right. Oh yeah. yeah. We got a we got yeah. a really good EVP there. Yep. Oh yeah. 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 So oh, it, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, it, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna position her chair like in this direction because the lady supposedly hung herself right here, right? So she would have been hanging right here. Right. So I positioned Jessica exactly facing that direction. And she didn't know anything about any of this beforehand. Yeah. And um, so I put the helmet on her and everything, and I was standing there. And, I mean, she didn't even need to be left alone for a period of time or anything to start getting stuff with the helmet. And next thing you know, she's seen a, somebody, a, like a human figure, like she said it looked like it was uh, levitating or elevated in front of her. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was amazing. And that, just as she was saying that, um, uh, Chris Booth come around behind me, and he had the uh, SLS camera. Uh-huh. And he starts mapping a figure right there in that spot. Right. When she's talking about it. That's but very that's cool. That's right. I, I think he, so, post, he, he posted that, didn't he? A video of that? I don't think, I don't think so. I haven't, I haven't seen anything. I know, he had, I, I, know I'd, I had seen one a while back uh, from uh, Randolph with someone using that that equipment I, unfortunately we don't have that i wish we could it's just too much for us we're you know we're cheap old country people <coughs> yeah, I wish that too. <laughs> right <laughs> awesome very cool yeah it was cool stuff unfortunately i don't have the footage myself so right yeah we have flashlights we have flashlights <laughs> yeah, we do have flashlights and, and they're on our cell phones but we have them. yeah <laughs> uh, hey, that's cool. Hey, uh, the cell phone has become a very popular paranormal. And don't device. get don't get me started on that because you know what, I hate what, that. <laughs> oh my god! What's your take on that, KD? Wait a minute! Wait, wait, wait! Let's um, let's, let's give him a minute. Right, We're gonna right. take a break here just for a minute, okay. and we'll come right back. Okay. All right. All right. Hello, this is Christopher St. Booth, and you're listening to the Dead Zone.
radio stations in town were palm trees, we'd be the one with the biggest coconuts. Now. Here are the one, the only. Dead okay, we're back. So. KD is yeah. a mad scientist. How would you like to say a word? Mad Man. scientist. I love it. Hey, KD, this is Scott. Hey, now, finally, the man hey, speaks up? up. I haven't had a chance to get a word in, so. <laughs> Well, now's your chance. What's up, man? Now's my, now's my chance. And Well, I was just telling these guys, like, I'm listening to you talk, and I'm like, I can't follow. I, I, I'm, like, trying to catch up and listen to everything, and, and by the time I'm, like, coming up with, like, working up this question or whatever, you're totally onto something else, and I'm, like, totally lost. But I got to say, I really, I, I really like the choice of helmet you chose to, to put your, your, your work on. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, it's yeah. it's much better than a regular like bike helmet or something. It was a transformer, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, well, because I, I tried I tried a motorcycle helmet because obviously that's that's the, that's what the original thing was. And my original attempt was to recreate what he did. But you know, the bike helmet is not adjustable. You can't. You know, everybody's head's not the same, right? So right. how do you? you know, I the can't. magnets have to be over a specific part. Nothing of your, fits your, my head. No. <laughs> your head. No, it fits your head, trust me. It fits nothing, nothing, head. No, like, nothing fits my head. That's what I went off of. My head is like the biggest head that I know of anybody that I know. So, <laughs> oh, well, hey, wait, next, we next time problem. we meet, hey, are you going to be at Horror Hound? Let's try that out. Let's, uh, let's find out. <laughs> we, will, we will have a head measuring. Yes, we <laughs> need to, yeah. Because we, we all probably fit in the same category of uh, not in one size fits most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it doesn't I'm work always, for me. Wait, when I'm at Liz, I'm like, do you, do you guys have like an extra, extra large draft, maybe? <laughs> and they, they're kids, so they're like, no, sir, this will fit you. Listen, I've been yeah. here, I've tried this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it fits just, just, just enough to where it feels good when you put it on, but the, by the time you get down the road, you have, you have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Pass out with lack of blood in your yeah, skull. Right, yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that can also make you hallucinate, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we do a lot of things that can make us hallucinate. Mm-hmm. So I, no. <laughs> I was looking around, and I, I, I was in a yard sale or something, and I just happened upon this, this Transformers voice changer helmet, right? And I pick it up, and I look, because I'm a Transformers fan, first and foremost, has a giant um, Decepticon tattoo on my arm. Nice. So, um, yeah, very cool, yeah. So I'm looking at the helmet, uh, and I'm looking at all the straps and the bands on the inside, and it's it's made basically so you can move it up, down, forward, back. I mean, it's, it's it was perfect, you know. So I was like, well, you know, it looks cool. So, <laughs> but I so I just cut the face out of it, and um, yeah, and I painted it up, and that that's that's pretty much it's hasn't changed since then. And I've actually used the same one a few other times for a couple other builds. I'm actually working on my own helmet right now. Um, I'm going to 3D print it. I just have to finish designing it and everything. Uh, it's hard to actually, I'm finding that it's really hard to actually make your own helmet. It's better than the one that I'm using right now. So. <laughs> All right. I'm, well, I'm sure you can figure it out because your initial goal was to make the God's helmet, and you've yeah. improved. And not only that, but you made it adjustable. And, man, you're just, you're for the consumer, aren't you? Well, I, I'm looking at, at different people using it, using it in different places. Sure. You know, and, and you know the the yellow moped helmets is kind of silly looking. <laughs> well, you know, um, I don't know if you do know. I'm a special effects artist. I've made helmets in the past, so oh, cool. if you if you have one 3D printed, I can make a mold for you and, and produce copies. There you go. Yeah, the resin. Resin there you yeah. Go. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, that's what that's actually what I want to do, but I just you know, for me to start doing that from nothing is it takes a lot of work. I do that all the time. He's man. right I, here, I, man. Yeah. Right, yeah. I'd rather have some of my experience do it. So yeah, I'll definitely uh, be hollering at you as soon as I get that, that model made. Yeah, cool. do it. Yeah. You do do you do the roto casting? Is that what you do? Right, yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I I looked into it but you know, I have to watch, every time I take on a new idea or device that I want to build, I have to completely learn, like, a whole new subject or five subjects from the ground up. Sure. And What's wrong with that? Know, Roto- Roto- What's wrong with that, right? Yeah. Roto- He's a busy man. Red- molds, this is like, yeah, it's not at the top of my list. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, that's that's one I I will gladly <laughs> outsource out to a friend. So yeah, definitely. All right. Well, you know where to find me. Very so, cool, man. Awesome. So on top of this kick-ass helmet you've designed, now and if I remember correctly, when we hooked up in uh, at Randolph County, you were you had a pretty good list of um, well-known psychics and investigators that have used this at different locations and whatnot. So aside from that. You have a bunch of other kick-ass stuff that's going on. Oh yeah, a bunch of oh, kick-ass yeah. stuff. We do a lot, we do a lot of stuff. We, um, you know, the ghost boxes. Um, my my friend and teammate Doug Pimblot, he um, he's another ghost box genius, and uh, he he's actually in, in my book he's the genius on on ghost boxes as far as like um, historical what we know like Frank box. Uh, goes boxes and stuff. He's he's an electronic expert. So um, between me and him, we're, we're we've got a lot of cool stuff coming out. Um, I'm also working on uh, some new boxes that I'll be putting out pretty soon. Um, I have one that I'm going to call the Legbo box, and I chose Legbo because of uh, the uh, voodoo uh, Papa Legbo. Uh, yeah. Papa Le- Papa Legbo, yeah. right? Yeah. He's like the the uh, he's the uh, intermediate between the living and the underworld. So, I think you know, made if you a want to talk to your right? dad, you have to go through Papa Legbo. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, with the ghost boxes and, uh, you know, we're working on some visual stuff. Uh, the uses a uh, Kinect cam, but it's not your standard uh, SLS, um, which we do make those do. Um, well, that's, we, we make our own version of an SLS, not an SLS, but SLS is just a Kinect camera on <laughs> Anyway, so um, yeah, yeah, we're we're doing a lot of cool stuff, man. Um, yeah, I got I got, there's potentially another project I might be working on out in the desert coming up. So, Ooh. what? That might be. What? Desert. I, I can't really say anything. <laughs> what? What are you telling me? Yeah, yeah I mean, he's yeah, not telling. I can't. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> right? Are you kidding me? We're gonna we're we're, we're we're gonna go ahead and talk about. Are you kidding me, dude? You got another one coming up. You just got on. I, I, I you just that. got. <laughs> it's, it's maybe. It's a maybe thing right now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got on the brand new show. Everyone, everyone knows. Everyone loves it. Ghost I, I'm of. I'm glad everybody likes it. I'm really. I'm. I'm you know. Um, we we knew we knew it was, was going to be good, but. Uh, what is it? We knew it was going to be great. What's the name of it? Then actually. What's the name of it? I forgot. Ghost of what? I'm kidding you. Ghost dude. of Morgan. <laughs> I'm kidding you. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was super cool that um, that they wanted me to be a part of it, and you know, it was, a, it was definitely an honor to get to work with Sarah, Ben, and Jeremy, and you know, all the producers and the whole crew. Everybody was great. It was just all around a great experience. I really don't have any bad stories to, to tell about the whole thing at all. Well, we're done then. Forget it. <laughs> We're done. No, Good I'm to kidding. talk with I'm you. Kidding. No, no, no. We're here for the dirt. Yeah. Anyway, no, really. How how cool was that, man? G- give us a little bit of insight on on that kind of thing, man. How cool was that for you? Oh, uh, well, he just you know, said it was great. I lived there for like three years and uh, Fort Polk uh, when I was in the army. Oh, and, I uh, went to uh, boot camp there. Oh, really? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry too. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah. no, I, I, I don't want you to. I don't want you to talk anymore about, you know, if you don't want to. Just how cool was that of an experience for you? Oh, yeah, I mean, it, was, it, was a, it was a it was a great experience. I mean, um, it was it was basically sort of a dream come true, like a bucket list type thing, like a, something. If I do this this list of things, I'll be happy when I die, right? So that was one of my that was on my list of things. So uh, if I never get to be in another show again, or I, you know, whatever. I'm, I'll be completely satisfied with my experience there on Ghost of Morgan City. Because are you telling me? Are you telling me that the season's over? No, there's uh, like three more episodes. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna episodes. call bullcrap. Yeah. Bullcrap. I'm gonna call bullcrap. Yeah, okay. You just said if if basically basically you're saying if if nothing else came up, you would still be satisfied. <laughs> no well, way. As far no. As the TV thing goes, you know, as far as like being really. On TV. Yeah, I mean, I would be happy okay. with, like, not, not doing paranormal stuff anymore, but, you know, I, of what? course I would love to keep doing TV, 
you know, other shows, that show, whatever. But, um, you know, like I said, I, I'm just glad that I got to do something that a lot of people don't get to do ever. So, yeah. That's at least I got to do it that one time. So, you know. <laughs> I'm over. I'm over here like no, no, because well, I mean, <laughs> not to how, say, how, how not to say that I'm not going to pursue my interest in, in, uh, <laughs> in, in the things that that I do on TV. But yeah, sure, I loved it, you know, and uh, um, yeah, and all the experiences. It's like we we got some of the best evidence, man. And it's like you know. Well, that's very cool. And, and, and especially, it was like everything lined up, like the, the universe lined up, stars lined up, I don't know, whatever. And like, you know, everything, like you have an investigation, and it, you, you know as well as I do, like you do an investigation, it's like nothing happens, right? Yep, you're well, damn right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. I, mean, I, don't yeah. Never get any I don't know if it's the combination of us, like as a team, or, or like uh, just the whole the whole um, formula in general, but uh, I think Sarah has probably dr drove a lot of uh, our activity kicking off, you know, like it did. Uh, she's kind of a super medium, so, I mean, super you medium. know, I'm, cool. I've always been highly skeptical of not not uh, psychic ability, but uh, people who claim to have psychic ability. Sure. Yeah, me too. And, and, uh, have, yeah, you, have you heard the show? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I think so. And so yeah. uh, I, I know we can relate. And, uh, but but you know when you when you meet somebody that is clearly, obviously, and, and then they, it, it, you know, I have a test. Right. So, right. Of course, I tested her, and, and she passed, and I was I was shocked because I've actually never had anybody pass my test. So well, uh, very cool. Sarah 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 Lemons passed my test, so she's. She's gold, in, in my opinion. Sweet. And uh, and Ben, I mean, it's you know, I watched Ben for years on uh, TV on Factor Fiction. That was like my favorite paranormal show. Factor ever. Fiction, I yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that show. I love the whole idea. I still it. watch it. Yeah, it's still on reruns, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I got a DVR, man. I got all my <laughs> yeah, <movies. laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I was telling Ben when when I was down, I was like, dude, you got to go back and do do another season of Factor Fiction. But, um, yeah, so, you know, to, to get to work with Ben and get to meet Ben was awesome. Because, um, like I said, I've been uh, kind of watching what he did for years. And I even kind of uh, mirrored the way he worked on Factor Fake with right. some of, a lot of my investigations. So, um, he was definitely an influence on my uh, direction I've been going in. And Jeremy, Jeremy's, man, that guy... He knows so much stuff. I, like, and he he won't he won't sit there and just like bombard you with either. He's not one of those guys that's, like just gonna start talking to like this guy gets shut up like me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, Jer Jeremy, like, he won't say nothing until you. But when you ask him about a topic, he will shock the hell out of you by <laughs> knowledge <laughs> on uh, you know paranormal stuff. So right. you know, Jeremy, he's he's awesome, man, and and he knows Louisiana. He knows. I love that place, man. I, I love New Orleans. Me too. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I love it too. I, love, I just love it. It's like a different feeling when you get down yeah. there. I, I moved. Been, I uh, moved to India. Uh, I'm sorry, Illinois, back in the '80s, and then over to Indiana. But back in the '80s, back in my high school days, and a couple of years after that, I spent all my time down in, in uh, Louisiana in the swamp, dude. I love it. I can't. I can't get enough of it. You weren't chasing gators, were you? You ever uh, see the old skunk ape down there? Uh, Honey Island, man. Yeah. We just went. We just went down there a few years ago, man. Michelle and I. That's awesome. That's great. It's wonderful. I need to get down there, but I need to get down there when it's not 154 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like right. It. But when the love bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm all about the love bugs, man. Yeah. Oh, man, everybody, everybody up here is like. Oh man, I love this hot weather, and I'm like, whatever. Bring the yeah. snow. Yeah, I. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want. Yeah. I just I'm want fall. October, the first of October, because right. it snows at the end of October. Well, a little, a, a little light. Or you get sunburned. One of the two. Yeah. It's Indiana. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Louisiana in the wintertime, and, and that's about. I mean, you know, you can't see out the windows in the spring. I mean, because the windows are like. 
It's when, it, when it gets that humid out, like... They fog up, you can't see... <laughs> I, I'm sorry. But yeah, um, Louisiana's great. So, you know, it's cool to get to go down there, get to visit again. And uh, and as Morgan City, like, everybody in Morgan City was just so... I, I, obviously, there's going to be people who disagree, but I, I, everybody I met in Morgan City was for super nice. And, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. It's just a really cool place, I thought. And, um, Southern folks and are it, the greatest people in the world, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there you go. So, Katie, I got a question for you, man. Yeah. It's a hot one. What's your favorite Southern food? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. Probably Southern food. Southern food. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, we all, we all know, did. <laughs> anybody yeah, no who, anybody who wants to give me money to go to Dracula's castle, feel free. You know, yeah. my, my and and, and you'll let them wear there. the helmet. Yeah, but you like them, yeah. 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 All right. but, I mean, I'll give them, a, I'll give them a, a shout out and everything on the on the video. <laughs> See, it's, it's, I mean, they're gonna have to raise a lot of money because I think all of us from Dead Zone get to go as well, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> take oh, yeah. it, take yeah, us yeah, with you, man. We'll we'll, we'll we'll make it happen. Take us with you. Right. Well, oh, yeah. whatever. He said oh, it here, nice. so that's where it. You know, that's how it goes. <laughs> all yeah. right, but hey, hey, we're out of time, man. Um, and we so good, have him back on. so good to talk to you again. Well, yeah. not again, but for the first time on the show. Well, we talk to you right, all the yeah. time. Yeah, and, um, uh, you know, I, we, there's so much to talk about. Yeah. I'll on again, and I'll explain the helmet in a little bit more detail. Absolutely. But first, tell everyone where they can find your website, where they can buy your equipment, and where they can find your new show. Uh, Supernatural Inc. with a C dot org. Uh, is our website, and basically that's just your link to our Facebook page and right. social media pages because that's how we do most of our stuff. But uh, on Facebook, you can find uh, Supernatural Inc. page at Supernatural I N K. Very cool. Um, and uh, I'm on Instagram, is Supernatural Inc. Um, yeah, we have a YouTube channel. Um, it's it's kind of it's suffering, but it, you know I'm trying to do something with it. But I think that's actually under. Uh, it takes it time. takes a while, man. It takes a long time to get some kind of recognition. Yeah, it's no big deal. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, love it. Yeah, yeah, just tell where it was at. Paranormal math scientist for the uh, YouTube channel, and yeah, that's that's pretty much me. And then uh, then you got Friday night, of course, because Morgan City on Travel Channel eight nine Central. Awesome. There's that. Uh, and this Sunday so, you can uh, find him on Dead Zone. And this Sunday he'll be on the Dead Zone. Yeah, I mean it's eight o'clock Eastern time. I don't think telling people what time the show starts. <laughs> 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 right. Too late. Right. Too late. Damn it! Right. Oh, yeah. you oh. did it again. Yeah. You didn't say damn. Always. Again. <laughs> no damn school. Yeah. Damn you to hell. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, thank you, man. We appreciate you coming on, and we're gonna have you back on again if that's okay. Oh, yeah, I'd love to, man. It's fun. Yeah, I love talking to you guys. All right. Awesome. Sorry Every for the... Every time I go to a time, I'm like, where's, where's Lee at? Where's Lee and Dustin at? And, well, <laughs> we're here, man. We're, we are. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I appreciate you. And tell Katie and the family, we look forward to seeing them again. Very soon. Uh, we'll do that. Very soon. All right. And from... And, uh, you guys want to say anything? Bye, Katie. <laughs> Bye, Katie. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Good All to talk right. to you. All right. Next time we hook up, you too. All right. I'll talk to y'all again. All right. Okay. This is the Dead Zone Paranormal Radio Show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.